Hello everyone, Lord of Flames here, and it's time. Remember when I canceled the Soul of Michael movie, even to have it a new start, a new beginning for its own type of rebooted saga on Soulless Night? Like well, as Nitroplex Universe, or rather it was mostly remake called Neutronic Universe. And it was canceled. Because you already know, you already know what's the reason why. But now, it's been a month, or probably a year since you don't know anything of that much of the story. Because the movie was planned in early 2018. And I was planning on having it released in that year, on summer. And decided to have it on next summer. That one, that one didn't work. And probably do it this year instead, but that one didn't work either. But now, you're going to learn the story for part 1. Because part 2 and part 3 weren't even made in that time. Ah, no. They weren't. So, I'm going to read you all the whole script on my iPhone. Because I still haven't yet, still try to get used to this new laptop I got for my birthday. Because there's a thing about printing that I haven't connected. But I'm going to have it read it on my phone. So... I still have it on my Google Docs, just to remember the old days. Well, here we go. <clears throat> scene 1. The scene starts with an explosion of a building, then people running at each other. Warriors have the most bloodshed with them having fewer people. Motar said, They got to our front gate! Juna, I lost contact with the gov- I lost contact with the general! Rico. There's too many of them. We have to retreat. One of the wars got shot by two of the Pterodons. Pterodon soldier said, Finish him! Until it was split, with a Pterodon soldier got shot by a true leader of the warriors, Nitroplex himself. Runs up and attacks every Pterodon army around the field. Nitroplex. Where is Ryan? Towards a small building with an unknown warriors kills the Pterodons are almost about to attack Nitro. It was Ryan, the son of Nitroplex. Ryan. Sorry I was late. Got into a big traffic. Ryan and the others looked up and saw hundreds of Pterodons with a second commander named Suka. Um, Dad? Suka. Pterodons. Attack! Nitroplex. Warriors. Fall back. Get to the tower. The warriors run for the Pterodons. Both groups have more than a few dead. They made it to the ter they made it to the tower that contains a pod. Next to the entrance of the pod, there's a sign called Coton. Nigerplex. Our planet has fallen, warriors. Get to the escape pods. It's our only hope to get to Coton at once to our hope might come for a survival. Ryan. That this is our home. We had to fight for it. Then three flying pterodon jets are coming to the tower and pass by. Nitroplex, we will fight on, son. I have located a secret planet to an unknown universe. Earth, you and the others must go there and contact every species to help us for hope. Don't worry about me, son. You must take care of your little sister with you. Your mom was always proud of you of protecting your family. Now go! Then the three jets return and shoot in the middle of the tower to make a great fall. Every warrior inside of the pod escape, and with Ryan and his little sister, Nigerplex. Good luck, son. I will get there some time. The p the pod, the last pod flew off and flew up. The last pod flew up to the biggest warrior spaceship inside and escaped to the portal. And Nigerplex is alone, fighting off every turn. Dons. Nigerplex runs and jump off the tower and calls for his cyber dragon to pick him up. And the dragon got him and they flew up to a big strange light calling to them while inside the pod with Ryan watching the view of his planet home. Cordon, while everything faded to black while the ship disappeared. The scene ends and a title appears. Scene 2 Outside of a town with people walking around and two males walking, talking. Kane Michael. Kane Mikkel. I mean. Now look, son, you cannot just do of looking at girls without con contra without concentrating on driving. Jacob Mikkel. Sorry, Dad. I'm just getting a little bit fuzzy, you know. Kane. I do know, but
But look, after your mother died of that car accident, I cannot let this happen to you too. Coughing a little, coughing a little bit. God, I can't take this cancer. J Jacob, I know what happened, Dad. But let's just go back and home, and you get some rest. I might try to find some medicine or anything to get rid of your cancer. They began to walk home, and more hours later at night, Jacob was just at the garage fixing the truck he had driven. But then a figure pops out of the garage. Satona. Hello, Jacob Bacal. Jacob. Who are you? Say Satona. There's no question right now, child, but I'm here to help you. Of your father's cancer. I can stop it. Jacob. What do you know about that? Say Tona. Even a blind man could see he's sick. The thing about cancer is the time it takes, the toll on the loved ones. Jacob, what if I could help your dad? Jacob, yeah, how? Say Tona, how is it important what if I could make him better, give him back his health? Would you be willing to make a deal? Jacob, name your price. Say Tona went surprised that Jacob agrees. Say Tona, oh, I'll take yourself. Jacob, myself. Say Tona, what I mean is that you'll become something else than a human, that you can do whatever you want to have powers like the ones that call themselves as the guardians from their universe. Jacob, okay. Say Tona, by sunrise tomorrow, your father will be healthy as a dog. All you have to do is sign. Satana shows a signed paper and Jacob holds it, but then blood appears out of his thumb. Jacob gasps. Satana said, Oh, that'll do just fine. Satana's eyes became to change a bit while everything went to black. Scene 3 Inside the SCP Foundation Underground, there with William, Jenny, Christian, and SCP-049 try to find a way out for a bit, but give up. Jenny So William you said that SCP-049 can't hurt us, is that right? William, yes, ever since I met him last year, ever since I read some stories about him that he experiments anyone from medicine, but when he touches anyone, it would kill them. But it seems it didn't work on me, or you and your foster brother, because ever since a good old friend of mine had told me about it, that any of us had something within us, but he didn't tell me that much ever since he was gone because of Nightmare. Christian. Oh well, those are now behind ever since Michael is already dead. I hope there is any way, I hope there's any vent closed around us if that could be our way out. Jenny, you always keep thinking that vent would help. Christian, well, yes, SCP-049. I'm afraid not, since I look at it much such, so we can't fit it in them because it's small, if you didn't know that. William, yep, you heard him. Christian, <sighs> whatever. Doors open with two guards and a scientist. Scientist 1. Alright, Class Zs and SCP-049, you're all heading to SCP-990 for talking. Come along, come along. William and the others followed them without attacking. For some hours later, they went to the place and found a room with SCP-990 sitting. SCP, I mean, Scientist 1. All right, Jenny, you first. Jenny, fine. The guards opened the door and Jenny went in. She saw SCP-990 sitting waiting for Comless and saw her. SCP-990. Ah, hello, Jenny Caden. It's nice to meet you. Jenny, nice to meet you as well. And how do you know my name? SCP-990. You know how many of us as SCPs can scan anyone's brains just like SCP-039, I mean 035. And please, sit down and we can talk. Jenny sits down in the yard chair and they went to a dark room with just Jenny and SCP-990. Jenny, how do you... SCP-990, this is a long story, but please, let's get to the talking. Alright Jenny, about your family back then. They had some dark past for them ever since you were born. Since your father, Fred Caton, has been possessed by Michael. Jenny said, Don't talk about him, and don't say that name. He's dead now. 
SCP-990. I know, but that wasn't your real father's soul, Jenny. I know that too, and how do you know? SCP-990, well, this was a time I never told in a long time. A long time? A man named Edward William met a creature by name Nightmare. He made a deal for bringing his wife back from the dead, but Edward William chose what will happen. So he took the book and never gives it to Nightmare, and ran away and never seen again. So Nightmare has enough souls to create the future project that is his children back from the dead to rule the world. Jenny, wait, you mean that Nightmare, the one that got defeated by William, and Michael is his son? SCP-990, correct. Ever since Nightmare Real, ever since Nightmare Real name as Traven was once something like a true warrior, he met a loved one named Nika and became lovers to create their children, Michael, Carissa, and Julia. But until so many years later, with Michael, his father Traven turned evil with the dark magic and to kill everyone who stands in their way. But until everything changes through the history with Cordon species with peace and chaos. That monster you killed was Michael, but the body he possesses. Jenny said, But that means his soul was back in hell and never came back? SP-990? Correct. Timer off and doors open. Guard 1. Alright Jenny, get out. It's William's turn. Jenny got out and let William come in for his turn and everything turned to black. Scene 4. Jacob woke up in fear for what just happened. Jacob said, Damn. Ken came in and said, Good morning, Sleeping Beauty. Jacob said, Dad, you look. Ken said, Great, right? At least that's the, what the doc said when he looked at my x rays this morning. Jacob gets out of the bed with a confusing look. Jacob, What are you talking about? Ken said, I've been sick, son. When I finally get up the nerve to tell you about it, I'm not anymore. I can't explain it. But I feel heavy as a dog. Now come on, fire boy. I got some work to do. Now get my bike ready. Don't want to keep those people waiting. Meanwhile, out streets with vehicles driving and Kane, Ma Kane McKell is driving with his motorcycle while Jacob is, is at home watching some shows. But then at the streets, Satona pops out of nowhere and then a garbage truck hits Kane McKell so hard while Satan, I mean Satona, is enjoying watching it happen. Some moments later with Jacob, he saw the breaking news of his dad got hit. Jacob freaks out and starts the truck and drove over there to see him. Once he is there, he got out and runs to him while while people are watching when the medics put him in an ambulance vehicle. Jacob said, No, that, that, and he's sobbing. While Jacob's crying of sorrow, he heard a deep laughing voice and turns around and saw Satona just standing, but he just disappears as a smoke. Some hours later, Jacob is driving his truck on the road while he was driving. A flash of skeleton demon pops out of nowhere in front of him, and Jacob turns the truck too fast and then flips it over and crash. Moments later, that Jacob is out of the truck lying on the road. Satona pops out again. Satona, you are no good to me, dead young boy. Jacob woke up and gets up in anger. Jacob, you, you killed him. Jake Satona, I cured his cancer. That was a deal, but I couldn't let him come between us. Jacob said, you son of a bitch. Jacob runs to him and began to punch at Satona, but he just disappeared and appears again behind Jacob. Satona, one day when I need you, I will come. Until then, I'll be... I'll be watching. Forget about friends, forget about family, forget about love. But once you turn, you have to find two enemies that I want you to set back to hell. It's Katrina and Iron. Once you did it, I'll let you do what you want to be with everyone. You're my Jacob McGill. Satana pushed Jacob and disappears. Jacob looks behind and he feels something. He lifts his right arm and with orange color and metal glowing slow on him. Scene 5 Meanwhile, outside that is a night time. Some agents from the USA are walking around with their guns out. Agent 1 Alright boys, put up the scanner on the scan on any energy around for where they are hiding. 
HN2. Yes, sir. The elders put the scanner on to scan everything, and then they found one hiding inside an abandoned house. Agent 1. Use the rocket launcher. Agent 3. Pick up his rocket launcher and target at the house, then fire. The rocket hit the house, everything went on fire and explode. With a figure popping out, got hit. Hatra. Coughing. <laughs> no! Hatra get up and run away. Agent 3. He's getting away! Agent 1. After him! All agents chase Hatra with their guns and shoot on him a lot. Hatra said, Ah, no! Wait, please, hold your fire! Hold your fire! Hatra left Slay, got shot and bleeding, and drops down. Ancient 2. You have number! Hatra. Medical officer Hatra. I'm a friend. I'm a warrior. Can you not see that I'm injured? Every agent surrounded Hatra. Ancient 1. Then why are you running? Hatra. Our leader, Nitroplex, sent his distress message those months ago. Hatra plays the message. Nitroplex, recording message. Calling all warriors. We are under a target attack. Cease all contact with humans. Hatra. We are all hiding. All warriors are being hunted. We're all in danger. Agent 2. I lost one of my siblings back in Russia those years ago. You'll get no sympathy from me. Just then, a strange figure appears and shoots Hatra. Then the rest of the ancients start shooting at Hatra. Hatra, what's wrong with you humans? Hatra falls mortally wounded. Ancient free. Let's finish him. Night Scar appears. No. All agents back away that they saw Night Scar appeared. Night Scar said, He's mine now. Hatra, Night Scar. Night Scar says, Warriors. Pterodons, like little children, always fighting, making a mess out of the universe. Then I got to clean it up. There is one way you survive. Tell me where he's hiding. Where is Nitroplex? And Hadra with his last words. Never. Nice guard put his sword through at Hadra's chest and brutally kills him. Nice guard said, Never is here. Then everything went into darkness. Scene 6. Meanwhile, inside a dark office with one orange light, with a security guard doing his work. Tape on. Cassette man. Before you go, there is another one have been found, but we didn't know what you tested. As well, but with some audios of thinking if there is something with it. Audio 1 begin in 3, 2, 1. Audio 1 on, with some strange noises for some minutes and off. Cassette Man. Documentary results. Security guard looks at his paper and puts a check on, and looks up and saw it, looking at him. Security went in shock and looking for a taser, but there is nothing to find it, and look at it again for some free 30 minutes, and then... Michael said, Tick, talk, tick, talk. And jump scares. Security guard screams. In a hallway with five guards with guns and then alarm is on. And the speaker is on. Alert, alert, alert. An SAP escape. The guards ran to the another hallway and saw a figure running away to find a way out. Guard one. Hey, stop right there. Michael keeps running but found a well and jumped down to it and falls into the darkness with a burst of laughter. Guard free. Damn it. We almost got it. Guard one. Should we uh go down there and catch it? Because it might find a way out outside. Guard two. Nah, you don't get it. That thing how it looks. It almost falling apart like pieces. So it can die down there no matter what. From now on, let's go get some break. The guards give up and walk away, but a scientist walks up to them. Hey, what the hell just happened? Did you caught it? Guard free. No, because he just doesn't give a shit because he says that the figure or whatever it is falling to pieces because it looks dead. Scientist 1. Oh my god, you guys are so dumb. You don't know who that is? Guard 2. No, who is it though? Scientist. It's Michael, the one that made that neighborhood to death with a big army of zombies and a black creature. You still don't know who he is. You, you should have had. Get him and lock him here. Forget it, 
Forget if you guys do this again of not getting an SCP, the boss will kill you. The scientist walks away and the guards just walk to another hallway and everything faded to black. Again! Scene 7. At night, to some abandoned garage, Jacob was looking in the mirror talking to himself. The souls deserve men to live. They meant to live like this forever. Suddenly, Jacob's right hand of his skin is a bit peeling with his small flames. Jacob begins to freak out and went to the bathroom and washed it up until it stops. Once he did, Jacob heard a noise calling to him. Jacob. Jacob looks around for that noise, but heard nothing. Didn't, I mean, but nothing didn't appear at all. But he heard an engine sound coming outside of the halls. Jacob walks down and heard that same voice calling to him again and keeps walking until he saw a truck with a texture of flames. And then he heard evil laughter. Then Jacob turns left and said, You. And Satona appears. Hello, Jacob. Jacob said, Stay away from me, you monster. Satona, late for that, hmm? Nice truck. Yeah. Jacob said, Why you came back for me? Satana, Well, I'm always coming back for you, Jacob. Of that soul within you, all along that soul of yours screaming, yelling, and wants me to come back to you of fixing it to be free. Jacob said, But why has this all had to do with me? Satana, Well, that soul of you wants me to help you. To be ready at last. To be a hero of face the great evil of Pterodons. Jacob, You are a man of fire. That will defeat those monsters, that you might have a rightful soul that is ready to come out and show its true self as a demon warrior. Now, Jacob, you are a man of fire that will defeat those monsters, that you might have a rightful soul that is ready to come out and show its true self as a demon warrior. Oh wait, I just copy and paste that. Oh my god. Jacob said, find them yourself. Jacob went to the truck, but when he's inside, Jacob is stuck. He can't move at all. Satana just laughs. Doesn't work like that, kid. You're on a contract, so remember? If you could succeed, I'll return your soul. Jacob said, I will not do this. Satana just said, Then you had no choice. Satana snaps his finger, and the soul begins. The truck is turning on with the tires are moving and the truck drives so fast up to the road. Jacob is trying to stop it but no use. Then the tires turn up in flames a bit but stops and keeps driving. Then Jacob was taken to a graveyard and the truck opens the door and Jacob was flown up to the ground and begins his transformation. Jacob gets up that some of his skin is peeling which shows some metal of his body while everything winds up in flames around his body. Jacob just screams in agony, but laughs while transforming, transforming, until he roars. The two creatures came out of, of the darkness. Pterodon won. Well, well, well. Looking for someone? <laughs> Jacob said, back to hell darkness. Pterodon 2. We came all this way for just to show up as a new warrior. How pathetic. Jacob, you're going down. Pterodon 1, I don't think so. Then Pterodon 2 flies up and threw Jacob at a wall with chains of metal. Hooks at Jacob when silent that he might be dead. Or maybe not. Pterodon and Pterodon 2 just laugh. But then, Jacob's one hand moved in the Pterodon one shock and saw Jacob woke up and melted the chains off of him and uses his fire magic to make a fire shotgun and shoot that Pterodon too. J Pterodon 1 attacks but Jacob with his blade, but Jacob was too quick and grabs Pterodon 1 and hold him to make him melted to death while screaming. Pterodon 2 just says, Please, have mercy. Jacob only says, Sorry, hell is with no mercy. Jacob made a fire sword and Pterodon 2 tries to run away, but then Jacob's sword slashed through the Pterodon suit chest to the other side and melted him to death. Just like Pterodon 1. After all that fight, 
Jacob walks to his vehicle and uses his strength of power that Satona gave him to turn it into a futuristic cyber truck with flames. He gets in and drives off. Scene 8. Meanwhile, inside the depths of well, Michael appears in the darkness. <laughs> Just you wait. <laughs> Once I get out of here, you worthless punks. Uh, I will slaughter you like a sick flesh of a dog. Laughing, I can't wait to see the looks on your faces. Hear you beg. Laughing and coughing, I throw up a bit. Oh man, I think I'm dying for real. Which, he is almost about to die. Footsteps appearing. Suddenly, a half-man, half-creature walks out of the darkness. Nice car. Hello, Michael. It's an honor to finally stand in your presence. Michael, have we met before? <laughs> what happened to you, bud? <laughs> Why you look like a two-face or something? Carrying much? <sighs> Laughing again. Oh boy, I know what this is. You want to fight me. Prove your worth. Something is a new world order in hell. Good and bloody and agony. Blah, blah, blah. Look, buddy. I'm glad you're feeling honor, but you don't get too comfortable now. Hmm? I might be falling apart, but I could be string five guards right now without breaking a sweat, if I am still human. But you want to die, Scream? Fine by me. Until he saw a metal weapon, he picks it up and saw he picks it up and runs to his nice car. <laughs> it's night time, bitch! Nice car punched Michael so hard and Michael flew out and hit out a wall behind him and falls, coughing a lot. Nice car said, You think you could kill me, Michael? Look at yourself. That you're possessing a body? The body is ruined. A cut doom in a house full of wordworms. If not for the food, the serpent, snake worms, or any any parts of the endoskeleton holding what's left of you together, you weren't able to move. You're fading away, Michael, like everybody's going to forget you. Michael, I get it. I'm a wreck. Well, I die a lot. I'm used to it. I'll come back for another time and to the next. I always do. And I always come back. Nice car. Unaware, but there is no need for you to die tonight. Tell me, Michael, would you believe if I would told you that your fall that your failing to claim victory over William or Jenny was part of my plan? Michael said, Your plan <laughs> Wow, look at Two Face or whatever you are. I met a lot of people with big plans. And so far there's Fucking bullshit. So forgive me, skepticism from my language, but I'm gonna need some evidence. Nice car said, Very well. I truly remember back in hell that you have been planning for something in the future, like your father ruining everyone's life, killing Fred Caton, or maybe the death of your brother because of you. My girl breathing fast. How? Nice car. That he betrayed you and your father because for what you and your father have been doing this for many years. He doesn't know anything about these people with was innocence. So he had to do what he had to do to help them. And yes, for the power of Nightmare that brought you back to finish the plan for the future like a terror dance of death. But how could he bring you back to finish because he doesn't have any power yet. But if he wasn't the one who brought you back, who is? And Michael only said, You! Nice car said, Yes, child. Every plan that was mean to bring you back from the dead with a strange power stone called the Philosopher's Stone. And to do everything like your father from the first when you got to Fred Caton with your brother as well. 
or way insect moment. Michael said, coughing. Who are you? And what the fresh hell is this? Nysgar, I am Nysgar, your uncle from another world century, but rather being killed by my nemesis, enemy, Nitro. Years later in this world, I was reborn as an entity through the use of strange and powerful magic to possess a body of Suna. The life and mind of Suna Katen were discarded. The better to fulfill my profound purpose for many moons is to kindle inevitable hatred inside my greatest nephew. Now it is to stoke the fire and great him, the birthright of his destiny. Michael just said, Nephew? Nef nice car said, Yes, child. No matter how many years stretch between your birth and mine, we have the blood of the troops. We are family. Now come. This is the way to my underground chamber. Secret tunnel door opens. Nice car said, It is there to restore your body. And it's there that I will set my big plan in motion. Nice car and Michael went into the secret tunnel door, and it closes while they walk through. Scene 5 Later at the SCP Foundation on the ground, Jenny and the others finally went back to the room, and they saw SCP-049 looking at the vent again. That is the right side for a person to crawl through. William said, What are you doing there, SCP-049? And he said, Sorry, sir. Allow me to say this. This is our way to lead to the outside. Jenny said, Did you just say? And as a piece of nine said, Why, of course. I have been doing this for a long time since I met William. So since I made a plan to escape, the vent is our only way. Christian, Well, open it then. As a piece of nine opened the vent and everything faded to black. While they went to the vent and crawled out to lead up the SAP's foundation building. Some hours later, when they got out, they were outside of the gate, near the forest. As he, well, William said, Thank you, SCP-049. You did an amazing job. And he replied, No problem. But please, you can call me Jack instead, ever since I was a normal person. And he took his mask off and decided to become a normal human without being a crazy Dr. Killer. Christian said, Jack, sa Jack sounds fine, but anyways, I guess everything is over. That Fred Cajun's dead, Nightmare is gone because of William, and we had to escape. I guess everything seems normal then. Jenny said, Yep, I think we should find a town then. Do you want to come back? Do you want to come to Jack? No, wait, he said, Do you want to come, Jack? And he replied, Sure, why not? William said, Well, I'm not. I still need to figure out something to find. Christian said, And that is... William said, Ever since Shadow Kreisa, or whatever his real name is, he told me that I need to find something that is far from here. So that he said there is someone that knows everything about Fred Caton and my enemy, Michael. And Jenny replied, Alright, you sure you're going to be okay? William, I will be fine, Jenny, but please, you all need to go. They both said goodbye, they split up, William walked to the forest, while the others walked to the other forest, everything faded to black. Scene 10 Meanwhile, inside the tunnel, Michael and Nysgar is walking down to the chamber. Michael, what is this place? And with this long line, I had, Nysgar said, this is an underground for where I had returned. So many people had died down here for the sacrifice to bring a power to come. And you, Michael, are the only one, you are the only that is freak. Just like, you are the only one that is free. Just like your father, that is a warrior master to another planet. That was, home, that was your home. You were born and called Cordon. And how I got here from this world and taking over David Caden's body when he's dead is a strange person by the name Corin Fusion. He's the one that works with a queen of Voodoo's. Her name is Marie. Oh, fine. Oh, her name 
is Looney. She betrayed him that she only wants the power he had. So he works alone and brought me back from the dead by using a book. And brought my soul here to do his work for the future. And I am the one that brought you here as well to join the future. Michael said, So, who is this old bitch? I never heard from him before. And all these girls or some people from the past sacrificed themselves to bring me here? Wow, they seem to be fans of me. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, they got to a big chamber where everything for experimenting in labs. There are some fires around in a pool where some 25 dead girls lying down. Nightscar said, Seven in the pool, my nephew. Michael said, What did you just say again? And Nightscar replies, This pool will give you some strength to fulfill your blood body to, to kill anyone that couldn't stop you. So step in the pool if you wish to be healed. Michael just breathing and said, All right. Michael walked to the pool and got in. Hmm, some strange magic you gave earlier are gone now. And for that is, I don't feel any better. 25 zombies woke up and growl. Michael said, What the hell? What troll is this shit? Nice car said, I never said they're already been divested of the ingredients. If you want to be restored, you had to fight for their blood. Michael said, You fucking bastard! Lascar said, If you were not for me, you'd be still be in the well with worms around you and you were aware of every second of it. I offer you a birth child. Don't tell me you assumed to do it for nothing. Michael said, I swear, after I kill these bastards, I'm going after you. Lascar said, don't try to, don't try to. Once you got out of the pool, you feel much weaker before since the body almost falling apart. Just finish the work and you will thank me once you get through it. And Michael said, I freak, I fucking hate you. <laughs> Michael grabbed his weapon and attacked every zombie around him. Go to hell, you freak. Michael keeps stabbing and stabbing and stabbing every zombies around him. And he just laughs crazy if he's losing his mind already. God, I miss this. <laughs> and a big thunder happens and everything went to darkness. In which this scene shouldn't have happened. Because it seems so dumb. Scene 11. Later at the town where Jenny, Christian, and Jack was known as SCP-049, or known as Jack, walked around the streets and found a shop with clothes. Christian said, Hmm, looks like we can't get some because we don't have money, and uh, for a split second, Jenny just found a wallet with a lot of money, which doesn't make sense on how. On the ground and pick it up while Christian just stopped talking. Channing said, Heh, looks like you're in wrong, Chris, but we're rich now. Christian said, Oh, shut up. Let's just get some clothes before anyone sees us look like this. Some minutes later, that day wear different clothes and bought a motel room. Jenny said, Oh, well, there's something to do around here because I always keep thinking that something is wrong. Christian said, And that is? Jenny said, I don't know. I tried to think of it for what it is. But I don't know it. Jack said, Well, we should get some rest for now. They both accepted and went to their own beds and went to sleep. Seat 12. Some hours later, inside the chamber, Michael said, There, it's done. I got your ingredients. Nice girl said, How are you feeling, Michael? Michael said, Better than I have been in years. Now I can move my jaw a bit. While besetting this old body, who knows how long and I don't give your minutes, old timer. There's a kind of killing, you know. Look, I'm busy off doing something, Uncle. I had to go find Jenny and the others so I can kill them for revenge. Hmm, you want to come along? Nasakura replies, Our work isn't finished. I need to revive you for your body so we can get our final work for the future to begin. 
And Michael said, <sighs> Yeah, of course. There's a cat of distraction. Whatever I learn. Nice car said, Step in the pool again. And Michael just said, No, no. I have enough work for you and the others and always make me feel bored. And I always want to kill. So I'm leaving for now and you can't stop me. Nice car just forced the door to close and lock it. Nice car said, You can't just quit the work of the future, Michael. So you have no choice to do as I say. Come on, child. I can sense your feeling, but I'm not just like your father or your brother of being like this. Michael said, How do you know? Or rather, if I know if I could trust you. My nice car said, Because we are family, Michael, and our family could not. So please, go back to the pool. Michael sigh said, All right, but I'm getting revenge for being killed by those punks, though. Michael, one, Michael walks back to the pool, and then more fire spread around the pool. Nice car said, you will learn for how this is going to happen, Michael. You see, that is it that this planet that you're living has another name. Zaltron, the Chaos of Death Planet Crusher. He was banished and sent to sleep by his betrayer, Corridon. That was your home. But more years later that you were born, Quinola made you the way you were be of being a powerful warrior, of taking every power to rule everything. Ever since you and your army carried on started a great war, agents, I mean, against the warriors and the guardians, that were led to one and only Nitroplex. Every everyone never survived that battle, but you and some of your Terradons have survived, and the warriors too. But more years later, you and your Terradons went after a powerful creature called the Alchemist that was sent into a universe that is you destroyed by Ryan Plex of pushing the Corridon's crystal to your great, grateful spark and sent you to death and mostly destroyed the crystal that was supposed to bring more armies to rule the galaxy or rather, restarting the Corridon. Now everything changed since all the warriors and guardians split up and sent here to Earth for hiding to disguise as humans. But for you and child, I brought you back, but it seems you don't remember everything. Because when a warrior of the Terradons come back again, they don't remember everything and went to do something else. But now, it's time to get this future begin. Michael said, You know, I heard a lot of fancy little tales in my time. The how the world's gonna blow up, but this, this one's my favorite. Nice guard said, "My master, I call for you to bring my nephew Michael to restore and being for what he needs to be for all in depths and darkness." And the pool with Michael went down like an elevator, and the doors of the pool closes, and everything went to darkness again. Scene three. In the motel room, Jenny uses the telephone to call someone. Hello? Robert England replied. Hey Jenny, long time no see. Why do you want to call me? Jenny said, I just want to say thank you for telling me about the house and the rumors. And even though me and Christian were got attacked by Michael, that was the one who possessed my father, Fred Cateson, but we killed him already. And England replied, I didn't know that could happen, but I'm glad you and you, glad you and Christian just stopped the evil, just like William did. But I forgot to tell you something. Jenny said, and that is? And England said, you forgot that this Michael that you and your foster brother killed was in fact the son of Traven. Mostly you never know everything, yet this creature named Nightscar is an evil brother of Traven. Jenny said, wait, are you trying to tell me that this creature named Nice guard is still out he there in this world, England said. I don't know. I didn't learn that much about him ever since. Traven got defeated. Huh. <sighs> Sorry about that. And Jenny sigh. Oh well, but I think that creature is dead as well. Everything's finally over for now. But thank you for helping me back to the house, England replied. You're welcome, Jenny. Oh well, I had to go for now. Just going to meet some of my friends for now. Jenny said, Alright, see ya. 
Jenny hang up the phone and walked back to the room and think of a creature of Night Scar. Does that mean that a creature named Night Scar is alive or what? <sighs> Forget it. I think he's dead as well and Michael is gone as well. And that means everything's over now. Echoing while everything went to darkness. <clears throat> scene 4. I mean scene 14. At night out at night inside the motel, Jenny is asleep until some minutes later she sent something in her mind. She woke up and saw a flaming cre flaming creature and took her everything went to silent while Jenny disappears. Jenny was teleported to a flaming room with fire everywhere that she couldn't felt. Jenny turns around and then her half body turned up into flames. She screams while turning until she saw something in her mind that showed Jacob McHale's attacking enemies. A strange vo voice tells Jenny to attack Jacob before something bad happens. Jenny's left arm, both legs, half of her body and, ha and half of her head turn up into flames. And now she is brainwashed, been ordered by a flaming creature to attack Jacob. Jenny was teleported to a street with abandoned buildings. Everything went to silence until Jenny sensed something that her, was her target. Jacob McHale was driving his flaming truck. Jenny was not herself anymore. Ever since she was taken by an unknown creature, she began to float and fly very fast at Jacob while Jacob was, wasn't focusing on something that is following him. That, then he turns around and Jenny crashed down the truck and Jacob flew out of the vehicle then gets up and grabs his flaming sword and saw Jenny floating there. Watching Jacob and attacks him but Jacob grabbed, grabbed her first and froze her at the building. And explosions came out but Jenny still survives with no wounds or anything. Then Jacob went up there and they began to fight. Scene 15. Jenny said in anger I'll kill you Jenny throws some fire at Jacob Jacob gets pushed by the fire weapons and Jacob gets up and swing his sword at Jenny Jenny just got hit at her head and got knocked out at a moment Jacob walks to her and lifts lifts his sword and ready to kill her if he wants to Jacob said tell me Jenny opened her eyes and looked at Jacob with confused but anger in her Jacob replies why you want to kill me? You would know the ways with any of us have been going through. Jenny only says, So was I. Jenny kicked Jacob off and gets up. Jacob tries to get up, but until something just happens. He uses the power that Satona gave him and sends something in Jenny that, that she wasn't attacking him. But rather, an unknown creature was controlling her. Jacob went to shock and gets up and tries to stop her but she keeps attacking him. Jacob says, wait stop, this is our, this isn't aren't you. This is aren't, oh wait never mind. <laughs> Jenny grabs Jacob and push him down to the ground and tries to choke him but Jacob keeps blocking her. Jacob, would you listen to me? Something is controlling you. Jenny says, just die already. Jacob was trying to do something that makes him stupid. Jacob was trying to contact Satona that gave him powers if there was something to stop this madness. Then once Spark had spotted, Satona responds. Grab Jenny's soul and save it to bring her back. Je Jacob knows what to do and thanks to Satona that soon he'll talk to him for another time. Jacob grabs Jenny crystal in her chest and an unknown being noticed and tried to stop Jacob from happening. Jacob gets more damage from every scar in him. Jacob can see everything inside of Jenny's crystal. Memories, which only memories, and tries to pull Jenny out to bring her back to be part of herself and the unknown being would be gone and he finally did it while yelling in agony of pain. Then a flash happens. Jenny and Jacob were pushed up each other and got knocked out. Then a minute later, Jacob opens his eyes and then saw Jenny was standing there pointing his sword at Jacob. If Jenny is still going to kill him, or rather the plan didn't work. Jacob said, go ahead, finish me. Jenny still staring at his, Jenny is still staring at Jacob's eyes and then a split second, Jenny drops the sword and lifts her right hand to help Jacob 
for a lift up. Jacob was confused about what just happened and then grabbed Jenny's hand and gets up. Jenny said, Look, I'm, I'm so sorry I was trying to stop her, but I was so weak of stopping her spell. Jacob said, It's fine, all thanks to a devil who told me. I just felt guilty for all that. Who are you? Why are you here? Jenny said, My name is Jenny. My name's Jenny Caton. I'm the daughter of Fred Caton, and I was being taken care of a foster family, and I, w I and Christian, have been attacked by a monster named M Michael, who is used to be a father of mine. But all those are now behind. I and Christian have been taken to an SCP foundation, and have been escaped by Jack and William. I thought that my hope and come for peace, but I guess not. After all of that, what about you? Jacob replies, I'm Jacob, I'm Jacob McHale. My father had died those days ago and all because of that devil named Satona. But he turns me into this, a monster much like you. It's like that we're taken to be as monsters. Jenny stares at Jacob with a worried look on her face. Then her crystal had lightened a bit and saw Jacob's crystal as well. She doesn't know what it was, but she continues if... No wait, but it, she continues if this time that she met Jacob, she decided to help him. And she said, Look, it happens when we are born as monsters, if we were, if we're chosen in hell, or rather with hope, just because of that way I see you in you. I don't see a monster in you, and even me as well. Please, let me help you. Jacob looks at Jenny if there is hope in him with his life at to come. Jacob said, all right. Then an unknown portal had spotted behind them. They look at it and saw something had called to them, like as, Come to my warriors, we have work to do. Jenny and Jacob had no choice and walked to the portal and closed behind them, and everything faded to black. Scene 16. Back in the chamber, with a lot of fires around. Nice guard said, My master, I want you to bring Michael back to this world, and let this world filled with death. A big creature rising with water splashing. Nice girl. Rise, my nephew, for we will finish the future together. A big creature rises and steps down to the ground with four feet, like an animal. Nice girl says, Let the soul of Michael finally be awoken. Michael only replies, with a breathing with a deep pitched voice and finally roars with fire inside of anger. And finally, the last scene, scene, se scene 17. William is in the middle of the forest while walking. He stops for a minute to think of something and then he felt something through his chest to his heart. He looks down at his chest and is glowing with bright blue color. He doesn't know what it is. He felt something in his mind that gave him more memories that he didn't know they were in his mind. Then it's like he is sensing something in his heart or if it is his crystal. It wants him to follow something that it calls to him. He walks forward while everything fades to black. The end. <sighs> well folks, that's what's left of the movie. Even your might not resolve those testing animations from my second channel, Lord of Flames 2, but Anyways, the that's what the movie is about from part one. And if this movie did release, you all be like, "What the fuck did I just watch? This movie is horrible. Doesn't make any sense, and it doesn't make any sense. Not any chance, because the script was early made." Half it was similar to The Wrath of Jeffrey Keaton, and I was dumb in the time I tried to change those scenes to something else. And I did a bit, just in case. And ha and a year later, I updated the script with more scenes and changed those stories in the plot again with, like, fut futuristic warriors and pterodon stuff. And when that was already made, I looked back to it a year later, and I was... <sighs> mistaken for making that movie and I had to cancel it to stop it from happening 
trying not to make a bad saga. And it was canceled all those months ago in this year. And I was glad to to end it that time. Because I may have a feeling you folks are going to hate it for the looks of it. In which I may not know exactly. But now I show you the script. The whole story was it about. And you'll understand why. Well, I hope you enjoy listening to this video, folks. Of understanding the story. And that's all for today. And I hope you enjoyed it. There's a Lord of Flames here. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, folks. Have a wonderful day. And I need water because I haven't drank anything for a while after reading this.